Hi, welcome. Hope Savara here. And today is day 24 of my 40 days on the yoga mat. And today I want to inspire you to really be able to seek out your truth. And I find that currently in my life right now, I think it's important for all of us to see what's in front of us, yes, and see our goals and see our aspirations, but I think it takes a very big person to be able to step back and truly hear what other people have to say. And I think sometimes when we're able to do that, we are absolutely finally able to see things maybe a little bit more as they actually are. I find that sometimes we can be so aware that we actually are very unaware. And so today I want to encourage you to not only pay attention to your body and your experiences on the mat, but when you leave the mat and you go out where the real work begins, pay attention to not just what you see and what you think and what the direction you're going in, but also take in the verbal feedback from the people around you from what they see and how they see life and how they see the experiences of you and of, of the people that you spend your time with. And see if you can find a collaboration on those goals, on what's actually going on. And you may find that your perspective on life changes. Let's begin. Let's step the feet a little bit wider than the outer hip. Turn the toes slowly out into traditional squat. Now the direction of your foot is really predetermined by your hip. Just because my feet turn out 90 degrees doesn't mean that my hips are going to want to do that. So if you do have more restricted hips, keep your toes more forward. If your hips are more open and willing like in a straddle, then definitely feel free to rotate the feet out more. Keep pelvic neutral. Exhale, slide down the imaginary wall. Now use your hands and roll the thighs out, which you should feel now more contraction in the lower glutes rather than the pelvis tipping forward and booty tipping out, which usually means that the glute and pelvic floor relationship is not very good. And so try to keep that rotation out as you sit down into your hips. Now brace your hands against your thighs and really allow your hips to sink down. Let's rock side to side. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. Try to find as much space as you can in your hips. And again, come into the moment. Come into your breath, come into your body. We're not practicing for anybody else. And maybe you have had someone say something about your practice, comment on your practice, and just really take those words in. And don't overanalyze them, don't judge, but just really take those words in. How can that help me grow? And now slowly sink down just a little bit deeper. I'm gonna let up on the pressure on my hands. Watch not to let the knees collapse. And now rise up slowly, walk the feet in. Awesome. So from this place now, I'm gonna turn sideways, feet come parallel, exhale, low heel squat. Bend the knees, sink your sit bones down, reach your arms forward, broaden your back as your chin sinks to the chest. Inhale through the nose, spread your upper back. Exhale through the nose, sink into the heels. For many of us, if we have really restricted calves, that's actually a good culprit of pelvic floor dysfunction. And so the more open we can create our hamstrings and calves, the better relationship we're going to have with our deep core. Now slowly come back onto your hips, extend your legs forward, and now roll all the way onto your back. Knees come into the chest, give yourself a nice hug, let your back body broaden. Now legs to the sky, inhale, trying to use the strength of the deep core. So it's not that we're trying to thrust our body up, bracing with our arms, but more so trying to feel that deep contraction in the belly as you lift the legs. So we're noticing our hips launching off the floor. Pelvic floor contracts. So at a minimum, we're feeling the anal sphincter contract. Forward of that is that perineum. It's the central canal into the deep belly. And then finally, what controls our bladder. So imagine trying to restrict the flow of urine. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, if you need help, feel free to use your hands for help. Roll overhead. This is plow pose. Inhale. And then down slow, use the strength of the deep belly. Lift your spine, minimal momentum. And reach forward, flexed feet. Rise up, stacking your spine. 
And now roll back, strong belly. Inhale, hold. And exhale, roll the spine down. Strong, deep core. Rise up and reach forward. So let's find a few rounds of that. We'll go for about a minute. We're not leading with the head. We're rolling and articulating the core, trying to keep those deep spinal muscles turned on. If your feet don't touch the floor, feel free. Grab a couch or grab a couch. Grab a chair or turn to your couch. There should be no strain on the neck. For any reason, if that variation does not work for you, work with the hands under the knees, roll out the spine, chin to chest, lean as far back as you can, and then either slide up and lean forward, chest to thighs. So there's always an alternative. Roll yourself back. No pressure on the cervical spine. And slowly release down. I don't recommend doing this just after you eat. Exhale, strong belly, keep the legs overhead. Inhale, breathe into your kidneys and back body. And roll yourself back down. Exhale. Inhale, reach. Exhale, roll back. Inhale, reach. And exhale, roll down. Inhale, reach. And exhale, really trying to focus on breathing into your back body. Now, in your forward bend, your knees can be bent. Flex the feet if you can, rather than letting the legs flop open. Go a few more. Nice way to warm up the spine. Remember our spinal muscles are a part of our core. Relax your shoulders as you lengthen. Even if you're here, bend the knees a little bit to get a little bit more relationship between your hamstrings and your lower back. Remember, you can always bend your knees. Don't let your ego get in the way. Inhale. Exhale. I'm feeling the strength through my belly rather than my hip flexors. Extend shoulders back. Think about smooth transitions. And then now stay in plow. And if you're working with that first variation, I recommend turning to a wall and putting your backside to the wall and coming up or sticking your feet onto a chair. Roll your shoulders together, create a nice little pedestal. Hands to the low back ribs, lift one leg at a time into shoulder stand. Now a variation of shoulder stand will be candlestick, slide your hips into your hands. Again, no pressure on the cervical spine. If not, your back and plow or your feet are on a chair or on the mouth of a couch. If you're looking for a little bit more core onset, interlace the fingers and anchor your arms into the floor. Inhale through the nose, pelvis moves towards you as your feet pull back and away. Minimal glute squeezing and try not to lock the knees. The legs should not externally rotate, but stay very much parallel. Now breathe wide into your restricted back body. Inversions challenge our fear quite a bit. And so try to stay as calm as you can. If you find that you are able to work with the unsupported variation, hold on to a towel if your fingertips won't lace. Make sure you're keeping the chin at the chest. You never want to tempt the neck into a vulnerable position. Now either stay here or we'll slowly release the arms one at a time. So take your left arm overhead, press the arm into the floor. You'll notice you'll lose your vertical position slightly, but we want to try to minimize that as much as possible. Weight is on the base of the neck, or I'm sorry, the base of the head, not the neck. So now you stay here in your lumbar variation, or slowly bring straight arms, palm to thigh, and palm to thigh, hold and breathe.
Remember your otherwise back and shoulder stand. Do not let your ego get in the way. This is about you working to the best of your ability. Slowly arms come back. Slowly arms come back to the floor. Ooh, I'm gonna lose it. Slowly roll the spine down. Arms reach overhead. Inhale, arch the back, really exert, exaggerate the curve of the spine. Beautiful. Bring the arms down, knees into the chest. Happy baby, flex the feet, clasp hold of the feet, ankles, or even grab two straps. Draw your heels away, almost like you're trying to bring them over your knees or slightly out. Now press your sacrum into the floor. The restriction of my lower body lifts my hips up. So even though my thighs come to the floor, nothing really has changed because as I push my thighs higher, my hips come up higher, or my thighs lower, my hips come up higher. So try to keep your lower back sacrum on the mat as you extend your quads towards the floor. Relax your shoulders and try to breathe into the pelvic floor. The first step to good pelvic core work is first creating a mental relationship with the physical body part. Playing with a little bit of a straddle extension. Inhale, extend what would be your left leg out to the left and draw your right heel in. Hold it under your feet or ankles as however you see fit. And then coming back to center, inhale. And exhale, extend your right leg out, draw your left heel up towards your pubis bone and belly button. Try to keep a little arch in the lower back, which is going to turn on a bigger groin stretch. Inhale, come through center. And exhale, relax your shoulders. If your body is curling, head is pushing back, get your head up onto a blanket or a prop. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. Inhale. Again, we're going for a good stretch. Keep the feet flexed and the lower back arched away from the mat. So we're in neutral. Inhale. And exhale. Draw the bent knees heel towards the belly. Inhale. Nice work. Exhale. Inhale, center, exhale. Inhale, reach through the heel. Again, try to think about almost drawing the tailbone towards the floor. And as you do that, again, a nice neutral. My belly is strong, especially as I transition. Otherwise, my whole lower back and pelvis just kind of go wherever they're going to go. Just because your body moves there doesn't mean it belongs there. Inhale. Now keep your left leg extended. Try to hold your sacrum and pelvis steady as you extend your opposite leg out. Now flex through the heels. Hold, feel free, under the shins and over to the calves or grab onto straps. Relax your shoulders and let your feet, with a little encouragement from your hands, move towards the floor. Now breathe deeply. Be willing to see your body in a new light. Be willing to see asana, postures, movement, core work in a different light. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. When I first started teaching more functional core work and functional movement, I was practicing a lot in my personal practice, but there was this fear of how my students would accept it when I introduced it into class. Sometimes you just need to make a change. You don't have to explain it to people. You just have to do it. You feel it in your gut. You know it's the right thing. Just do it. Inhale through the nose. Draw your heels and feet towards the mat without letting your lower back plummet into the mat. Let's go a few more good breaths. And sometimes an inverted straddle can be a lot easier to work with than a straddle sitting down because you're sitting on the restricted body part. This way you can allow yourself to move more freely. All right, use your hands for help. Hands underside of the knees. Bend your knees, heels towards the groin, and draw your knees together. Grab them into the chest. Now soften your hip flexors and relax and broaden your back body. Rock yourself to a seated position. Great work. 
Let's flip over into a tabletop position. So hands and knees, folds of the elbows forward, deep breath in, curl your toes under. We're trying not to hunch and round. Keep the length of the spine, but the encouragement through that deep pelvic core. With the fingertips wide, fold to the elbows forward, lift your knees, but stay nice and low. Now deep breath in, swing your knees off to the right without lifting your hips up. Exhale, contract across the lower belly. Inhale, swing them up to the left. And exhale, pelvic floor engages. It's almost like someone has a board pushing on your bottom and they're pressing up that energy through your lower deep core. And again, inhale, twist to the right. I'm not really moving my upper body. Exhale, strong lower deep belly, contract on the pelvic core, pelvis plus core. Inhale, twist. Definitely a really great lower back release. Exhale. Inhale, twist. Keep breathing. Exhale, engage, 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 engage. Inhale. We can do this movement all night long. I want you, though, to make sure that you're using the right muscles. We're not just trying to perform the right action. Exhale. One more set, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, and exhale, nice job. Turn the hands around, fingertips towards the knees, broaden through the back, now either stay here or lean back, pressing the heels of the hands into the floor. Inhale, broaden through the upper back as you keep the palms on the floor. Breathe. Now stay here, or let's try to lift the heel of the hand, bending your elbows. You're really gonna feel this through the center of the palm, through the carpal tunnel, through the lower forearm, possibly even into the fingertips. Inhaling through the nose, and exhaling through the nose. Our hand closes all day long. Let's really try to stretch it open. Nice, now unroll your toes, lean back onto your heels, either just let your wrist rest for a few moments, or open and close the hands, we're gonna feel a little stiff, but that will get better. Awesome, let's come to the forearms. Grab a block, and if you don't have a block, measure off fist or wrist to opposite elbow, and bring your hands parallel. The reason when we're on the forearms where we never wanna go interlaced fingers, or fist and palm, there's only one movement I ever do this with, is because when we push down, we're overusing our biceps and our pectoral muscles and adding more of a hunched position where we actually take the strength load out of the core and we shift it more into the upper body. Now, if I keep my arms open, I still keep the line of my arm and now upper back more active, but I shift the strength down where it belongs. So we're keeping core poses, core poses. But to me, everything is core work because this is always the motherboard of every movement. All right, let's come down to the forearms. Your knees are always a great alternative. Know that they're there for you. Use them when you need to. Neutral pelvis is always, elbow sits under the shoulder. Now step back one foot at a time. If I let my pelvis sag, I'm gonna feel this in my lower back. When I push my booty to the sky, I'm gonna feel it in my lower back, but I'm not gonna feel much core work. So press down through your forearms like you're trying to cut a thick piece of cheese. Engage the inner thighs and imagine as though your core is actually elevating towards the crown of your head. It's coming through your body like a tunnel. Inhale, knees are there. All you'll do is drop them down. Nothing else shifts. Exhale, shoulders slide back. Any hip flexor discomfort, ever slightly tip the front of your pelvis up into your core just a little bit more. Now inhale, lower the pelvis, uncurl the toes. Exhale, lift through the front core, press through your forearms, and inhale, crown of the head to the sky. Feel your sternum come forward. If you're feeling lower back pinching, it's because you're not activating on the front walls of the abdomen. Drop through your tailbone and stay lifted again through your lower deep core. Press down as you lengthen along. Last 
Let's go again, curl the toes under. Now the strength of my pelvic core is what's gonna lift me, not necessarily the press of my arms. It's this area of the body. So nice deep breath in, feel free to use your knees and then lift the belly. Exhale, lift it up and even it out. Now turn your feet to the right, stack or stagger, or drop the bottom knee. From the waistline down, I'm twisted. From the waistline up, I'm very much parallel with the floor. Now lift your hip to turn on your oblique. Let's breathe, even your body weight out in the arms. If you really want to challenge it, float your top leg. It doesn't have to go high, but flex both feet for me. Keep the bottom ankle straight. No sinking head. Back to center, drop your pelvis, inhale, pubis going into the floor, exhale, lift through the belly, and inhale, extend through the head, shoulders back, sternum forward. And nothing is hunched and collapsed, everything has space. Lengthen through the toes and press through the tops of the feet. Legs are charged but not locked. Now deep breath in, curl the toes under. Remember again, where are you lifting? From your arms or from your deep core? Exhale, rise. Turn your feet, stack, stagger, take a knee. Keep everything long but the hip lifting. Even the weight between the forearms. As I firm up the bottom leg, possibly float the top leg at about hip level. Exhale back, inhale, pubis bone to the floor. Exhale, strong core, extend through the crown, relax your shoulders, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Now back to your challenge side. Which side twist do you need to feel a little weaker, a little bit tighter, a little bit less on par? I want you to go back to that side. I'll be twisting my torso to the left. Curl the toes under. Exhale, think about how you're moving, not just trying to get there. Turn your body. If you need to do a lesser variation or less time, feel free to go with that. Inhale through the nose. We're trying to introduce a more asymmetrical, or a more symmetrical body through asymmetrical movement. So typically we have a stronger side, a weaker side, a tighter side, a more open side. We want to be able to balance that out. Back to center. Now this time puppy dog, lift through. That folded hip line, press down through your forearms so you're not collapsing. Extend long, let your palms hug in on the block as you push into your forearms. Feel free to bend your knees, which will help you go from a rounded position, which is really loading the shoulder girdle in a very negative way. Shake out the head, release the neck. Exhale, knees to the mat, sit back, devotional or child's pose, breathe out. Roll yourself up and grab your blocks. Now, if you don't have blocks, roll up some towels from your bathroom. And I'd say maybe roll one, two in a roll, and roll the second one just one time, so that you have a higher roll and a lower roll. If you have blocks, we're gonna make a reverse T. The block that's gonna be on your torso is at the mid-level, and the block closer to your sacrum is gonna be at the lower level. Now place your sacrum up against that lower block, and lay yourself back for a nice heart opener. If you have a foam roller, feel free to lay on the foam roller. If the neck is not comfortable dropping back, lift the head up onto something. We all have different things going on. Honor your own body. Arms up with the T overhead or at your shoulders. Find a position that best serves with openness. Now bottoms of the feet together down angle. Play off of that great hip opening that you did in the beginning. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Close your eyes and focus on your breath. I'm just moving my arms to 
find a really good stretch point. So if you're doing that, move very slowly and mindfully.
Gently bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice hug. Soften the folds of the hips. Rock to one side. Gently bring yourself up. Use your top hand for help not to strain. And come to the center of your mat. Thank you so much for your time, your energy, and your effort tonight at the mat. And so again, when you leave today, I really want to encourage you again, what we kind of spoke about at the beginning of your practice. Sometimes we see life, and we see it a certain way, we see our goals, and we see what it is we want to do in our plan, and sometimes our focus is very narrow. And even though we see, we think we see things as they actually are, and we're seeing everything, it can sometimes be clear that we're not. And so be willing to step aside from your ego today, or tomorrow, or in the near future, and try to see what's going on from someone else's perspective. Try to willingly gain insight from other people and see if that allows you to broaden your outlook, to expand your horizons, to see things as they maybe are, just a little bit more clearly. From my heart to yours, from my soul to yours, now the real work begins when you leave your mat and you move out into the world. Namaste.